the wife is reading her new favorite book, the kids are taking care of themselves, your favorite sports team is done for the season, so you turn on your computer with a few hours to spare. Should you play Diablo 4? In this video, I review D4 from a casual gaming dad perspective to help you decide if you should spend your precious time playing this game. Hey everyone, it's Axicus, your friendly neighborhood casual gaming dad, and I've played countless hours of D4 since launch, and as a casual gaming dad myself, I know the struggle of finding a game that balances complexity with flexibility that can be both engaging and satisfying. There's a good chance you're considering playing D4 again, but the change is coming to Season 4, so how does it stack up, and should you play it? Let's dive in. From a casual gaming dad perspective, I review games by scoring 1. How accessible the game is to casual gamers, 2. How engaging and satisfying the gameplay is, and 3. How much time is required to enjoy the game. I roll that all up onto a matrix of flexibility versus complexity to guide whether or not you should play the game. First thing we'll cover is how accessible this game is to casual gamers. This game is available pretty much everywhere, most recently being added to Xbox Game Pass. Pretty much the only system D4 is not available on is the Switch, so you shouldn't have too many issues getting this game on whatever platform you enjoy playing. But even on PC, controller support for D4 is incredible, and you can seamlessly switch between keyboard, mouse, and controller during gameplay, which my wrists and arms happen to enjoy throughout the rigors of a typical D4 season. Everything you need to learn to get blasting in Diablo 4 is readily available to players. There's the official Diablo 4 Discord server, the Blizzard forums, and even plenty of third-party sites that can help make cutting-edge theory crafting easily accessible. Huge shout out to all the big blasters who put in the work to help us casuals excel. Within the game, tooltips are plentiful, though you should enable more detail options in the game settings, and even without external resources, you should be able to identify and understand many synergies between skills, legendary aspects, and paragon nodes that help mega boost your character power. Let's talk about how engaging and satisfying the gameplay is. This will definitely be improved heading into Season 4, as we'll experience insane improvements to Helltides, better itemization and crafting, thank you Last Epoch, upgrades to the boss ladder, including a new boss, Torment Level 200 difficulty bosses, and more readily accessible summoning materials, a new game mode called The Pit, think Greater Rifts from D3, and even some quality of life features like a massively buffed Codex of Power, along with all that extra stash space it helps us gain. This is already on top of a buttery smooth combat system, awesome synergies between abilities and legendary powers, unique items, a paragon system, a nightmare dungeon system, a weekly gauntlet, and class features that help make your class fantasy an enjoyable playstyle. There is plenty of variety and depth in gameplay mechanics, certainly the most the game has ever had for those interested in delving in. We'll have to see how it all plays into the balance between challenge and skill, which has been an issue for this game. Historically, it's leaned more towards the boredom side of the flow scale because the difficulty of endgame activities hasn't been able to keep up with character power and skill. While higher scaling difficulty is coming to the pit, which is promising to be as difficult as Abattoir of Zir in Season 2 at the highest levels, much of the recent patch notes have leaned heavily in the way of player benefit, which does have the potential to result in an ease of the game, which has failed to produce a meaningful and engaging endgame to this point for some players. But for us casual gamers, I think we benefit either way to be honest. The character journey in this game has always been satisfying and is poised to provide an even more enjoyable experience with increased motivation to journey through a significantly lengthened character arc. I found good seasons of Diablo 4, like Season 2, to be highly replayable as I've enjoyed as many as 3 level 100 characters in a single season. Beyond that, new seasons are almost always fun to play, even for a bit, and now that there's already talk of D4's first expansion, we know this game is on a long run. But can the devs stay connected to the player base and keep delivering solid improvements to the community? There may be reason to believe with the release of Season 4. Flexibility in playtime and session lengths has also been an issue for Diablo 4, most notably the time gating of Helltides. 
Imagine your favorite video game makes you feel like you have to do chores on the weekend at a certain time. But these issues have already been totally improved, and I think the game is ready to provide increased enjoyment and fluidity to the leveling farming experience, so you don't end up having to endlessly farm trash mobs in normal dungeons to make the most of your time. It's finally seeming like just playing the game will be the most satisfying way to progress from level 1 into the end game. There are still game modes, notably the boss ladder, that are much more accessible in group play to maximize the efficiency of summoning materials. But the previously mentioned D4 Discord server is a great place to group up with other casual gaming dads so we can team up and get things done together. Hashtag dadvice. There are still going to be activities that you have to do if you want to participate in certain aspects of the game, like collecting summoning materials for the boss ladder or crafting materials from the pit. Therefore, there will still be some time-bound components to your journey. Considering all of those factors, where does D4 fit on the matrix of flexibility versus complexity? Well, flexibility refers to how easily a game accommodates different play styles, skill levels, and time commitments. For D4, I score the flexibility a 3.5 out of 5. And complexity, which relates to the depth and intricacy of the game's mechanics, systems, and challenges, I score D4 a 3.5 out of 5. That's a solid rank for D4, and it's a major improvement to how I would have ranked it a few months ago. Season 4 changes have gone a long way towards increasing both flexibility and complexity. Now is definitely the time you should play D4. Thanks so much for watching. If you're still here and you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews from a casual gaming dad perspective.